Welcome back to our weekly environmental news report. First news. For the past two weeks, a large number of wildfires have been burning across a stretch of land consisting of normally damp peat bogs in western Greenland, a region known for its massive sheet of ice and snow. Satellite data from recent years shows a dramatic increase in fire activity starting in 2015, and this year has already witnessed more than double the fires observed two years ago. The fire is small compared to American standards at 1,200 acres, but is unusually large for Greenland. Parts of Greenland have been drier this year, but it's not quite possible to say climate change is the sole cause. However, peat is especially vulnerable to the effects of climate change, drying out as temperatures rise, which exacerbates climate change if it burns. Every four years, a panel of more than 300 climate scientists overseen by a federal advisory committee assembles a rigorous scientific review of how climate change is impacting the United States. A draft report that informs the 2018 National Climate Assessment, a major summary of the causes and impacts of climate change on the United States, is currently being developed by federal scientists. It warns of the severe consequences of climate change, strongly refuting the Trump administration's statements that have downplayed the human impact on climate change. According to Paul Bledsoe, former climate advisor under President Clinton, Congress mandates the report, but the White House greatly influences how much attention its release gets. The draft report says global temperatures have risen 1.6 degrees Fahrenheit since the mid-1800s, 1.2 of which has occurred since 1951. Of that warming, there is at least a 95% likelihood that more than half could be attributed to human activity. A new study published in Geophysical Research Letters reveals that sea level isn't just rising, but accelerating in parts of the U.S., such as Florida, up to six times faster than the average. Sea levels in the southeast, between Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, and Miami, rose dramatically between 2011 and 2015. According to Andrea Dutton, a geological science professor at the University of Florida and a co-author of the study, the whole Atlantic coastline is vulnerable to this type of behavior as we move into the future. The natural contributors to climate change include El Nino and the North Atlantic Oscillation, which is the shift in atmospheric pressure over the ocean, as well as human causes from the Industrial Age. The domesticated European honeybee is currently on the decline, and the most prevalent cause of death is due to infestation by the invasive varroa mite, which are also suspected to be a key contributor to colony collapse disorder. To help the bees, Professor Steve Shepard at Washington State University worked with author and mycologist Paul Stamets, founder of Fungi Perfecti, and announced that they may have discovered a way to kill varroa mites without killing bees, using a mushroom. Initial lab tests revealed that bees exposed to this mushroom extract survived while their mites quickly died, but more research is needed. Said Mr. Samens, I'm hoping that people will recognize mushrooms for the important roles they play in ecosystems that we are just now beginning to discover, before it's too late. The Pinelands Biosphere Reserve of New Jersey is the largest expanse of open space in the northeastern United States but ongoing industrial development is threatening the area's main aquifer and rare wetland habitats. The viability of the Pinelands ecosystem depends upon the water that lies beneath in the 3,000 square mile Kirkwood Cohansey Aquifer, one of the East Coast's largest reserves of fresh water. In a similar case, the Upper Glacial Aquifer in New York used to supply all of Long Island's drinking water, but was eventually contaminated by industrial growth in the mid-1950s resulting in the disappearance of the Pine Barrens, which was much like New Jersey's Pinelands. However, the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection continues to over-allocate water supplies, fueled by increasing residential and agricultural development and demand for water. That's all for this week's environmental news report. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and help promote environmental awareness.